place where I'm sitting is a sort of attic. It's a place where they, where tomatoes are dried and stored, all the fruits, uh, maize, corn, wheat are kept. Most of it was empty when I came, so that I had the whole of it. It was large. I used to sleep up here very often, and I also used to spend the mornings reading. It was a wonderful view over the whole of the village and over the distant mountains. It was a perfect place for peace, tranquility, meditation. Those who have been to Granada will know that immediately to the south of it there is a high range of mountains, the Sierra Nevada, which has snow on it all the year round. On the other side of these mountains, between them and the sea, lies a stretch of country, well watered and planted with villages, which is known as the Alpujarra. It was a broken, barren country, burnt a pale gold by the sun, and spotted with irregular patches of oak scrub and dry thistle stalks. A rough estimate of the present population of the Alpujarra, including the Valle de Decrid, gives 150,000 persons, living in some 80 pueblos, 40 hamlets, and a small number of isolated farms and cortijadas. This population has been kept fairly constant since 1870 by periodic immigrations to South America. down by 81 years of living, hardly capable of surprise any longer, slow in his movement, the English anthropologist has come back after 55 years to the village of Jägen, which was his home between 1919 and 1924. Compared to its neighbors, Valor and Mithina, the geographical characteristic of Jägen was its airy situation. Jutting out a little from the mountain and lying, its height above the sea was 4,000 feet, between the orange and the chestnut zones. Economically, it was its poverty. Although the land was good and well watered, and although almost every family had their plot or terrace, it lacked the usual nucleus of well-to-do people. The sort that is who shaved every Saturday night and on Sundays put on leather shoes and a tie. For the same reason it lacked the occasional big house with its tiled roof or walls of brick. All its architecture was primitive and better. of those years spent in Jägen, Gerald Brennan wrote South from Granada, a sociological and anthropological work which will prove both a model and a rewarding study for those engaged in research into the lives and customs of communities. Spain and the Spanish people impressed young Brennan so greatly that he not only decided to stay in Andalusia, but at everything he wrote since, during half a century, is about Spain. The Spanish labyrinth, the face of Spain, the literature of the Spanish people, and his autobiography, recently published under the title of A Life of One's Own, show tremendous efforts made by a non-Spanish author to understand the soul of one of the most contradictory and paradoxical people of Europe. During the last 50 years, Brennan has observed the Spanish people with the curiosity of a child and the severity of a scientist. He has known Spain during all kinds of regimes, under the monarchy of Alfonso XIII, the dictatorship of Primo de Rivera, the chaos of the Republic.
He is familiar with the Spain of the Civil War between 1936 and 1939, and with Spain at peace during the last 35 years under Franco. Four generations have piled past his eyes. Not only his friends in the village of Jägen have died, but also many of the English intellectuals who used to visit him in his retreat south of Granada, like Lytton Strachey, David Garrett, Roger Fry, Virginia Woolf, and a Nobel Prize winner, Bertrand Russell. Though the streets remain the same as ever, the water that used to move the mill and the people who live in Jägen now are not those of long ago. But history repeats itself, doing just what Brennan did 50 years ago, a young Anglo-American woman, Margaret Osborne, who came to know Jägen one day, decided to stay for good with her two children. Margaret, who is totally integrated into this small rural community, will soon be married to a simple shepherd who lives up there in the mountains. generation of the 60s, Margaret has found her community and at Kathmandu in Jäger. The rich heiress who has traveled all over the world as far as Alaska in search of a paradise of peace and happiness now works in the fields together with other women who do the farming while their parents, their children, their brothers and sisters emigrate to Germany or make money from the tourist boom at the seaside resorts. No different from elsewhere, Spain sees her people leave the country for the city. And just like all the rest of the women, Margaret has to work hard. She does not mind, because in Jägen, far from the Spain of the sophisticated seaside, the motorways and industrial development, Margaret has learned how to smile, while her hands are gradually covered with calluses. In the afternoons, when she sits down in the village square to sew, the girls teach her what she never learned at a university. of this compatriot of his who followed his path 50 years later did surprise Gerald Brennan, though he knows perfectly well how difficult it is to resist the charm of a village in which at the height of the 20th century the rites and customs are like those that date back to long ago and where everything evokes past cultures and other civilizations.
Well, Margaret, I'm very surprised to come here and find you, a young English and American girl, doing exactly what I did uh, 50 years or more than 50 years ago. It's very strange to see that in a girl, I think. Can you explain to me why, you, why you've come here? Well, I've, I've always been looking for a calm, peaceful place to live. I've been in Italy in a small village also, but when I came here, first the landscape captivated me, and then the village itself, its people, were very, very friendly, uh, and also the faithfulness that there is in the village. In the Civil War, there were a lot of killings in Spain amongst villagers denouncing other villages. None of that occurred here. No. It's all like one great big happy family. Yes. And that's why I like it so much. Well, that's lovely, and yet, uh, I remember I came here for a few years. I never thought that I could stand it for, for too long because it is so remote from what's called civilization. But you intend to, to stay here always, I think you tell me. Yes, yes, I, I could never leave here. It has too powerful a, a meaning for me. I think in today in the world people want money, they want ambition, and I don't feel that desire. I only want to arrive at a, at a peaceful old age. Well, I think that's... Uh, Wonderful idea. It's really a religious idea of wanting to have the good life. Where well, one noticed the laxity was at Sunday morning mass. The women wearing either black mantillas or head handkerchiefs would fill up the front of the church, while at the back stood a group of men who talked and chatted and occasionally even smoked during the service. Other men stood in the square outside and considered that they had heard mass if they had merely looked through the door and crossed themselves when they heard the bell for the elevation. Dogs ran in and out, children played, and there was a general atmosphere of indifference. 